Good morning, YouTube. So I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Uh, it's kind of my introductory video. I'm taking my whole energy consumption, energy preservation, energy utilization to another level. And my intent is to install a solar system. It's going to be a, a total Tesla system. Um, and to revise all the appliances and technology that's in uh, my house. Well, so one of the reasons I wanted to do this video now is because I just, just made a massive change in terms of the energy consumption in my house by replacing my, uh, what is it, stock water heater that would have come with the house when I bought it. Uh, so now I'm, I've put a more energy efficient and I'm gonna go into that a little bit with you guys. But I just wanted to kind of introduce myself and kind of establish where I'm going from henceforth with the sequel videos to this one and so forth. I'll probably start an episode chain. Forgive me, this is not scripted. I just want to do this to kind of establish my reality. And you know, when I was thinking about going to Tesla and putting in a solar system, I, I was looking for information, you know what I mean? I was looking for that real world user experience that did not exist at all. I mean, you had a few guys that did some of these things out west that's kind of like leasing the system from Tesla and not purchasing. I'm doing a purchase and I'm not doing an overkill. It's like a seven kilowatt system, two power walls, a full house backup, right? Um, but I couldn't find no information and I definitely couldn't find no information on the capabilities of the power wall too and as well as kind of the uh, capabilities of the solar system as it is. What I'm trying to do now is first get my house energy efficient on Thursday. I'm f my system is going in and um, I'm going to do a full coverage, drone coverage, uh, uh, time lapse, the whole the whole spectrum, right? I'm gonna try to make it as comprehensive as possible for you guys, so you can make a determination within yourself and for your family and for your life whether or not that's gonna be sufficient. Let me tell you about myself, you know what I mean? Um, I, lo I love life, and first and foremost, I, I give credit and I praise and thank God who gave me this life. You know, most of us, we tend to wanna to say, oh, that's our parents, our mother, our father, our family, but they weren't the originated in life, you know, there's only one, and that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? And his Father who created all things. So I just want to make that clear that that's who I am. I am first and foremost a servant of the Most High, and I always will be. And I'm not going to compromise myself for YouTube rating. I'm not going to compromise myself for you guys' likes or dislikes or what have you. It's not about that for me. For me, it's all about just sharing the information that's relevant to you and that's relevant to me. And I'm going to put my information out there. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, oh well. You know, that's the reality. This is just going to be a straight shoot. And that's how I'm going to do from every video or every posting beyond this point. It's just a straight shoot. I'm not going into all the fancy explosions and all the gimmick, gimmicky type uh, advertisements where, you know, you get this nice screen transition and all that stuff. Now, this is just a, the level, the straight up and the straight up, right? That's what it's going to be like for my videos, at least. I just want you to get the, the, the pertinent facts, the relevant facts. So, first and foremost, I'm a Christian, and I will always be. I love God and everything about Him, period. And as you can see, I'm big into technology and RCs, radio control models from drones, helicopters, plane. I mean, you name it, I have it all. I'll give you guys a little glimpse of that too. And you will see some periodic videos of my drone flights and stuff. I already have some on the channel, so you can check that out as well, right? Um, but now this like whole renewable energy thing, it's like, <laughs> it's massive, man. I, I love the concept of not being dependent on the grid. I love the concept of managing my own power and the kind of steps I'm taking beyond this point to validate that truth is gonna be evident for you guys, right? Period. So trust me when I say it, it's gonna get interesting. I, I'm looking at doing some crazy stuff because this stuff is it's all about money, right? And we make it and we lose it. So I can die tomorrow 
And if I, if I hoard all this money and I'm thinking that, yeah, I'm going to have millions of dollars at the end of my life to go and spurge and have fun, and I die before that time, then what good is that money, right? It, it, I can't take it with me beyond the graves. And I, I, I'm not saying I'm irresponsible. I take care of my family, and I will continue to take care of them until the day I die. But what I'm saying is, is I have a lot for play, and this is my play. So join me if you will. Or if you won't, it's your choice. I don't care either way. This is just the real deal. I'm planning to do a lot more pertaining to this energy, the renewable energy scenario. Um, maybe at one point, I, I think I have to go into that Tesla Powerwall, man. I have yet to see anyone go into that thing. And I think largely because they're afraid of losing the warranty. But if Tesla is what Tesla say, I, I shouldn't be concerned about that, right? It's going to last. But I know. I, I'm comp competent enough to know that technology is technology and technology fails. So... That's me. Any questions beyond that, you can ask me, right? Look at my shirt. I represent that, right? So it's King Valley, right, at YouTube. And as you can see, Solar Energy, My Faith, and of course, RC. I represent Panama because that's my wife. And I represent the U.S. Virgin Islands because that's where I'm from originally. American born, just in beautiful paradise, U.S. VI. So that's what that's about, right? I'm 100% VI. St. Julian. Let's get that right. Born and rock, live and love city. You know what I mean? So for those that know what that means, they understand. And for those that don't, it's okay. You will one day. So let's get into this. I'm going to swap you guys around, and I'm going to kind of show you what I did right quick. This video will be a little long, but it's just an introduction video and kind of get you guys stated. I'll run through how my internal system is going to look for the power wall scenario. And then um, and then I'll take you outside and show you where my panels are going in relative to my house. All right, so here we go. This is the unit I took out. Uh, as you can see, it's a 50 gallon tank. Um, nothing special about it, other than the cost it requires to operate. And you can see per year it's $514. It's a, um, I think this one is a 4,500 watt um, element unit, dual element, of course. Um, like I said, generic scenario, I think it was like State Industries is the one who built this guy. So, that's this guy, all right? Now, this is the new guy. She's currently running, actually. This here is a Ream hybrid unit. So, it's, um, it's hybrid only because it, it, can, uh, it can do a, it's a heat pump water heater. Right? This is some of that new technology. I mean, they've been out, I guess, a year or two, but this is the latest from Reem. Right? I'll show you guys. And I didn't get it professionally installed. My brother and I actually did this installation ourselves, so please keep the criticism to yourself because, trust me, we're not professional by the least, and we just decided to do something on our own, you know? It's, it's all about that, taking a personal interest in what's yours. So. This is the unit, and I know for most of you guys who know about this, this is that. I'll just give you a quick rundown. We come out the wall, we double back, because the original unit was shorter than this unit, so those pipes went straight down to it, so that's why it's so long. But I didn't want to diminish that space, and I didn't want to use the cutoff, lose the cutoff valve, so I just went and double back. It looks all right, but it gets the purpose done. And if for any reason something happened, I have to revert or the technology change, and I want the latest, and I have to go back to a conventional top fed and supply unit, then I'll have enough piping to do so without having to reconstruct my entire pipe. Okay, so the water, cold water comes in through the bottom. That's what we have here. I decided to go with the flex bends because that allows me to have flexibility for movement, right? And so I'm not so rigid. So if I need to adjust the water heater or replace it, it's an easy disconnect versus having to continually cut uh, PVC in order to uh, get uh, a connection in place. All right, so here we go. And that lead on the floor, that's the water sensor. You all know that's to drain the tank, that, that, that intermediate um, spigot there. Um, and this is the return line. So we have the supply on the bottom. And then we have the return here, and this is the hot water going back to the house. And you see this pipe right here, that's a condensation pipe for the heat pump unit. That's probably what you're hearing, so I'm hoping it's not killing my voice, but it's actually not loud at all, man. So, so up here on top, we have, this is the inlet fan, 
is pulling the air into the unit and through the condenser and all that good stuff, you know, for, for you guys who know all about that heat pump technology and or refrigerator and refri refrigerant and all that kind of stuff. That's not me, but I'm learning as I go. And then this is the exhaust fan right here. What's awesome about this bit is that, uh, man, coming out of here is cool air. I mean, like AC type air. It's so comfortable. If I close my garage door, and within 20 minutes, this, this whole space gets cool. I mean, even waking up in the morning, it's like ice cold in here, man. So this is going to be awesome in the, in, in the summertime, being that I live in Florida. So I'll get free heat generated by the sun. This will consume it. We won't have to use any element. I'm currently running it in the energy saving mode because it's still kind of cool here in Florida. So it, it takes a little bit longer to recover when water is being utilized. So... Uh, I decided to go back from heat pump only to energy saver mode and that allows me to uh, split the difference between the heating elements as well as the, uh, the uh, heat pump technology, right? So it's a nice balance. It seems to be very efficient. I'm monitoring it via sense unit I have installed in my system. So it seems to be very efficient. So I'm going to run you guys through these screens right quick just as a... Uh, Kind of introduction to this uh, so the modes options seven day vacation mode water off and then if i hit these arrows well let me just go through this one more time right here heat pump high demand electric mode seven day heater off and then energy saver where i am if i change these if i hit these arrows right here this will increase the temperature it gives you a warning for scalding risk and then uh, 120 seems to be perfect, and it's a house of five. So we don't have no problem. I don't know, that might have been shut off because of me making the changes there, but that's fine. Um, so you hear the difference in the sound. So hopefully my AC is running too, so <laughs> that's conflicting noise, but it's not bad pertaining to the noise. You can't hear it inside the house, and even when you're in garage, it's not something that's like, you know, deafening or int intrusive to your... Um, to yourself as you are doing other things or being on the phone or just uh, having a conversation. It's very, uh, it's very subtle in the background. All right, well, with that said, so that's the unit there. So let's just go through the rest of these menus right quick. So service, that tells you the, uh, the model number and all that good stuff for the unit. And then you have the alarm here, nothing there, so it shows nothing. Um, Next thing here is status. Status will tell you the mode, no demand. That's what I love about the energy saver mode is that it's based on demand. So if I start running hot water and it start utilizing, then it'll turn on the, um, the heat pump to kind of maintain the water as it's being utilized, which is efficient because the heat pump uses less than, less than 500 watts, whereas the, um, the heating elements are anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000 watts, right? So it's an awesome concept when you think about it. And when I show you the sticker, I have to kind of swing around here to show you the difference between the previous heat pump or the previous water heater rather and this one, it's immense. But let's just get through this and then I'll show you the Energy Star sticker on this guy and you can compare it to what I showed you on the previous model. All right, well, that's that. And then the sensor, look at it. Look at the information it gives, man. Upper tank temperature, lower tank temperature, ambient temperature. I mean, that's amazing. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's, that's brilliant. You know, a lot of relevant information here. You know, uh, suction temperature, evaporator temperature, discharge temperature. I mean, it's amazing how cool that is. You got pertinent information. You know, the one thing I did notice that's kind of a nuisance. Nuisance is the fact that it doesn't tell you this information, the sensor information on the app. And I'm hoping that someone from um, Ream is hearing this video or watching this video that they can possibly make that change because that would be awesome if I can see what the temperature of the tank is, not just a set point that I'm trying to get it to. It will be awesome and determined so, so I can determine my energy consumption based on that reality. Do I need it to get any hotter? Is it almost to the set point temperature, what's the status? Do I need to change the mode of operation because it's taking longer than I need to based on the current, um, the current uh, temperature or ambient temperature in the, in the area and or in the garage? So these are, this is relevant. So we got that and then we have settings. And then the settings, these are just this information that allows you to, um, to change. You can change all this, as you can see, based on my stuff, is a touchscreen and Wi-Fi setup. So what I love about this, this is Gen 4 uh, of this these particular units from Ream. So this guy here used to have a um, 
a connection here, a RJ45 connection here that uh, actually it might have been, um, it might be RJ45 or, or a rendition of such. But anyway, it goes to another little Wi-Fi module, an Econet Wi-Fi module. Well, this unit doesn't require that Econet module anymore because it's an integrated e e Econet. Um, inside of this already so you don't have to have that add-on so to speak so that was thumbs up to Reams for, for finally getting that done and I'm glad I came into the technology when that was done because that saved me the headache of having to get that additional um, component or fail point to um, to uh, to maintain so it's pretty cool that's good to go so anyway let's let's get to it I don't want to make this excessive being that it's just a introduction to what my scenario I still got to show you where my power walls are gonna go and I got to show you kind of um, how the 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 solar system or the PV system is gonna be laid out on my roof right quick all right so here we go last bit of this scenario here is just the energy star sticker I don't know if I can get enough to show you I'll tell you if you don't see it yeah there we go so 110, man, 110 is what this thing here will utilize on the yearly energy cost. That's amazing. Whereas we had 514 on the other guy, and this guy is 110. So imagine that, man, 110 versus 514. That's substantial, ain't it? So I think that's the kind of stuff that makes a difference. That's what makes you successful when you when you go into renewable energy because now you're not burning unnecessary energy, but you're getting the same uh, results, if not even better results, actually. You know what I mean? Because I have multiple means of running this thing. So let's say, for instance, I lose a, a thermostat or I lose a, 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 a element, a heating element. So, all right, I got my heat pump. You know what I'm saying? Two in one, so or vice versa. If my heat pump go down, I still can run the hill. It's a little more money, a little more expensive, more consumption, but you still have a backup method. So redundancy across the board. So anyway, that's the Ream uh, Prestige Series Professional, and it's a uh, it's a heat pump hybrid heat pump water heater. So guys, uh, pertaining to the power wall and the PV system. What we're going to have here is that the power wall is going to get put, the power walls rather, there's two of them, are going to be you know, inverter, one inverter, two power walls are going to get placed on this wall. So we're going to have on the left, in, uh, power wall, in the middle, inverter, and on the right, a, uh, a, the additional power wall. So it'll be power wall, inverter, power wall. That's where they'll be. In the next video you see of this wall, those guys will be installed. And uh, you'll see one, you'll see the installation transpiring, and then you'll see the video of it being completed. Um, so that's the power wall location. So here we are, guys, outside next to the main meter. So what's going to happen is that to the right of this meter is where we're going to put all the disconnects and all the necessary requirements for the local utility, and uh, as well as the uh, load center, the... Um, the gateway that's going to manage the energy from the power wall, from the solar PV system, as well as the grid. So unlike a lot of solar users in Florida currently, when power goes out here in Florida, uh, per the law, the PV system has to shut down unless you have a battery backup, which is kind of like a, 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 a generator system. It has a, a switch gear that allows you to uh, isolate the grid and um, empower your system independent of the grid and when the grid returns it will disconnect that source of power whether it be a generator or a PV system or uh, actually a PV system and or a battery backup and return the grid to service so in this case uh, it's going to be a solar system and a battery backup so when uh, when the gateway sends that power has been lost it instantly switches to the battery and then it supplies the house via the battery um, and supply the battery with power via the solar if solar is available at the time right if it's at night then it'll just be a power um, a battery scenario backup scenario however it's during the day yep and like today's a beautiful day we'll have uh, pv and we'll have um, we'll have battery backup as well so we'll sustain maintain those batteries while 
the house is utilizing energy. All right, so this is where those things are going to go for the utility and um, all the necessary required per the local, local zoning laws and so forth and the utility, utility requirements as well. All right, so let's move to the back of the house and I'll give you a synopsis of what's going to happen there. All right, there we go. All right, guys, here we are at the back of the house. Now, this whole roof, this entire roof surface is facing directly south. So it was like, by God's grace, man, this house was perfectly placed and it was designed perfectly without them intentionally doing so to accommodate the solar system. So like I told you guys earlier, it's going to be a 7.1 kilowatt system. I, I don't believe in the overkill bit. And that's why I didn't go with the 9 and the 10 and the 15 and all that good stuff, 17, all that stuff. Because for me, it's about managing the energy and using it accordingly. I can utilize 7 kilowatt and still maintain my house and uh, be independent of the grid as long as I manage my power accordingly. Now, you notice if you always have excess, you tend to not pay attention to utilization. If you don't have excess, you have to be very attentive to utilization because if you don't, you, you run out, right? So this here is an incentive to keep my family conscious as well as myself, right? The whole point here is about the independence from the grid, the, the minimize the, you, the, the need and the utilization of the grid. And so by doing that, I decided just for the 7 kilowatts. And for me, the big hitters were the batteries, right? Because that's where you really need the, the storage. And that's where you really need the ability to sustain your power requirements, a PV system is great during the day when the sun is out, but at night when it's not relevant, when the sun is no longer viable and your system is in a sleep mode, what good is it, right? I need the grid, and if the grid fail, I got nothing. So the two power walls were more relevant to me than actually getting a big solar PV system, right? In the future, I'll go up and put some additional partners myself if I need to. But right now, I start with 7 kilowatts, and we'll see how that do. Again, I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me, so you'll be able to see how well it works so with that said i just want to thank you guys for listening to my introduction um additionally I, as i said i have many more to come i'm going to do a whole episode on my solar pv system once it gets installed i'm going to do various things such as running the house at full steam all appliances as normal and then i'm going to do certain things as cutting back like one day we won't use the water heater and see what it is we'll just for you guys we're willing to take cold showers right um do all these type of stuff to kind of give you a measurement of how efficient, how proficient these things are, whether or not they're relevant for you. And I'm hoping that they are, um, because again, it's all it's living in Florida. It's a risk, right? Because we can get a storm anytime. Last storm we had, I remember we, we were out of power for a week. So it was one of those things that kind of pushed me to the point where I am now and realizing I need more control of my energy because uh, depending on the grid, depending on lo local utilities, they're great and they do a great job but i can't be relying on that i'm not going to be relying on that so anyway i bid you guys farewell thank you very much for entertaining this video thank you very much for listening to me if you convicted to uh like and subscribe then so be it if you don't like it then you know be real you know i i don't i'm not here to please people i'm just here to pass information and if me passing information offends you then by all means you have the right that's why you have a thumbs down right but if you do like it you give me a thumbs up and you can even subscribe if you choose and see the the, the future episodes that's coming pertaining to the tesla system and one day i promise you one day I am going to tear into that power wall and I will show you what that bad boy looked like internally because if someone knows of a place where someone have done that, please forward me that link because I want to see it. I have yet to see it. All right. Well, with that said, goodbye, adios, and I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless you all. Talk to you later. Bye.